Danish scientist Hans Christian Ørsted rediscovered in 1820 the effect of electrical current on magnets. This effect was first discovered by Gian Domenico Romagnosi in 1802. The compass needle is deviated by the electrical current in the wire. Andrew Marie Ampere in 1827 explains the Ørsted's experiment by his theory of molecular flow. Countless minute particles electrically charged would be moving in the conductor. He attributes the electric current the opposite direction of the flow of electrons discovered in the late 19th century. In 1875, the American physicist Rowland discovered that a rotating electrically charged disk has a magnetic field. These two experiments seem to prove that the magnetic field is a result of electron translation. Is that true? It was concluded that the electron intrinsic magnetic field would result from the rotation of the electron charge which does have a dipole structure. Although there is not the slightest experimental evidence. Is that true? The Clements experiment is intended to show it is not in both cases. The magnetic field of a cathode ray is measured before and after a 90 degrees bend obtained first by an electrical field. Is there a magnetic field after the bend? This is the Clements experiment principle. The translation of the electrons is not the cause of the magnetic field and the structure of the electron field is rotational. While waiting for the experimental result, it can be noted that with the standard model of the electron we are led to two potential causes of the magnetic field. On the one hand the displacement of the electrons and on the other hand the intrinsic magnetic moment. The situation is contrary to the principle of simplicity, the famous Ockham's razor. Since the intrinsic magnetic moment of the standard model would result from the translation of electrons, the only solution to this paradox is to waive the translation. The rotational magnetic field of the electron is the sole cause of the magnetic field both of the electrical currents and of the cathode rays. The rotational structure of the electron field is to be compared to the link between the magnetic field and the angular momentum of the electrons. As a consequence, the magnetic field of the electrons cannot be directly the cause of the magnet fields. It is necessary that the electrons are organized into ring structures in the matter of magnets. Electrons of magnets include in such structures generate a magnetic field similar to that of the magnets. Such a provision might allow envisaging a quantitative explanation of the Barnett effect by precession effect. In Barnett effect, the rotation of a magnet changes its magnetic field. The precession effect also explains the magnetic field of an electrically charged disk in rotation of the Rowland experiment. In both cases, the axis of rotation of the electrons is set precessing. This results in a mean magnetic field of electrons in the enforced axis of rotation. A consequence of the Clements experiment is that the maxwell ampere equation is false. The magnetic field of an electric current is equal to the geometric sum of the magnetic moments of the electrons in the conductor. The second term of the second member of the equation makes no sense. Magnetic fields result exclusively from the magnetic fields of the electric charges. The magnetic fields which occur during charging of the capacitors results from the orientation of the electron field. Powering a conductor changes the electronic arrangement of the conductor and gives the magnetic field of the electrons an orientation collinear to the conductor. The electrons extracted from the cathode of the electron gun of the CRT by the anode voltage keep this orientation even after the elbow. Suppression of the displacement current invented by Maxwell to solve a mathematical divergence problem has another consequence. The Maxwell-Hertz equation makes no sense. If the waves of space result, in particular, from the electrons' vibrations and if they have an effect on the electrons, there is no evidence they are electromagnetic in nature by themselves. By renouncing to this pure postulate of Maxwell it can be envisaged to understand the results obtained by Professor Allais. Miller's measures with the Michelson interferometer are correlated to the respective positions of the Earth, the Sun and the Moon. So it is that Descartes was right. Gravitation and light are carried by the very same medium. This is the famous theory of whirls. 
Without going into the details of this theory, it should be noted that the theory of Descartes explains the Michelson's and Sagnick's experiments with full evidence. The most amazing is that Descartes had foreseen the deflection of light by the sun. Descartes' theory, however, raises three issues. The differential action imagined by Descartes does not conform to the law of Newton. By analogy with the whirl of the depressions of the atmosphere, it is likely that a condensation occurs also in space. If the middle of the space condenses in the nucleus of atoms, then, the resulting flow has a velocity directed toward matter complying with the law of Newton. Additionally the action of the stream on the nuclei of atoms is proportional to the mass of the nuclei if it has a bubble structure instead of a solid ball. It was then really Newton's law. Under the principle of Hamilton, the flow of a fluid towards a sink shall rotate and form a whirl. But then arises another difficulty, the speed of such whirls is inversely proportional to the distance to the center. The medium of the space has a special nature, since the tangential speed of planets is inversely proportional to the square root of that distance. The solution is simple. To obtain this law, it is sufficient that the particles of the medium of space be animated, not only with a Brownian agitation, as in all fluids, but also of an angular momentum. The principle of equipartition of energy, doubles the energy term within Lagrange equations, which then the integral is the inverse of a square root. We can also notice that the energy of the particles of space has an interesting form. The medium of the space has a pressure as all fluids. This pressure acts on the nuclei of atoms and maintaining its cohesion. It can be likened to an ideal gas. A particle moving in this fluid is subjected to an overpressure upstream resulting from the increase of the mean square velocity of the particles in the medium of space in a depression downstream. Its lifetime is extended accordingly if it is unstable. A particle moving very fast in the medium of space is flattened so that its wavelength is changed in addition to the Doppler effect. In perfect fluids, the rotation of the fluid in the vortex compensates exactly the rotation of the fluid particles. This flow is irritational. This does not occur in the medium of the space. The term energy is doubled. The whirl rotation requires an input of angular momentum. It can only come from the angular kinetic energy of particles of the medium of space. The whirl rotation speed absorbs a portion of the angular kinetic energy of the particles of the medium of space. So that, for example, near the sun where the speed is very high, the law of tangential velocities is no more exactly the inverse of the square root of the distance. A similar phenomenon occurs for galaxies that do not comply with this law. Their size leads to a significant decrease of the angular kinetic energy available close to their eye. So that the speed of stars within galaxies is independent from their distance to the eye. The flattened shape of galaxies confirms an aspect of the theory of Descartes. We now know that the worlds are stable flows to well under the principle of Hamilton. If the condensation of medium space in matter has a spherical symmetry, the worlds have an axial symmetry. In application of the Poincaré theorem, the whirl is concentrated in a plane that is the equatorial plane. On each side of the equatorial whirl, the medium of the space also condenses so that inverse whirls should appear and so on to the poles. These zones are separated by whirling cones giving to the zones alternating reverse rotations. This is what explains the zonal appearance of planets such as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Moreover, for the low inclinations trajectories of comets calculated relative to the equatorial plane of the Sun have a clearly zonal distribution. This is also the case of ocean currents for the Earth. The phenomenon is also indisputable for terrestrial winds even if it is less clear. Finally, the rotation of the Sun on itself is essentially zonal. The issue of the quantified nature of light if in viscous fluids, waves propagate in dispersing, it does not the same in a medium consisting of simple shaped particles. The dispersion of waves in fluids derived from the complex form of molecules, and mainly of the hydrogen links in water. In the air, the sound is already much more directional. With a bullhorn sound waves is concentrated. 
In the middle of the space, the vibrations of an electron causes two symmetrical wave trains whose cross-sectional area remains constant over very large distances if the particles of the medium are very regular spheres. In these conditions, they do not drag their neighbors. Such wave trains can therefore have effects similar to a corpuscle. It is the case of the photoelectric effect. The third problem is related to the transversal nature of light. The introduction of the angular momentum of the particles of space has an interesting consequence. Upon impact of these two particles, the momentum is transmitted according to the laws of Descartes. This transmission occurs by elastic deformation of the particles of space. But the angular momentum can only be transmitted transversally. This transmission results from the deformation of the particles so there is no slip one against the other, as a result of flattening of contacting parts. This fact explains the transverse properties of the light. During oscillations of the electrons, they transmit their momentum to the heat particles of space, but also their angular momentum. Each wave train is polarized in the direction of the angular momentum of the emitting electron emitters. And of course the two symmetrical waves trains emitted during electron oscillation do have the same polarization state. This is the case of the blue sky in the opposite direction to the sun and the double polarization of the case shell of the sun observed with this instrument a tube with diaphragms. The earth is dragged by the whirl of the sun. It therefore does not move relative to the medium of the space. The light is supported by the same medium. The Michelson experiment therefore cannot highlight the movement of the Earth around the Sun, it uses light itself driven by the whirlwind. There is no need of the Lorentz transformation. Conversely, in the Sagnac experiment the disc carrying the mirror rotates relative to the middle of the space and its rotation can be detected. This is the principle of laser gyros. Professor Salari was right. The Sagnac experiment contradicts relativity theory. The speed plays no part in magnetic fields. There is no problem of relativity within electromagnetic phenomena. There is no need of relativity theory. The speed of light is the quadratic mean of speeds of particles of space. The speed of light is not an absolute. There is no absolute in the experimental world. This approach obviously has countless other consequences. The galaxies do not rotate as required by the law of Newton. This is a result of the pumping of the angular momentum by the whirl. The tangential speed changes from 1 per square root of r to 1 per ram as in the red curve. It does not vary significantly over a long distance. There is no need of dark matter. Atomic nuclei grow with time. Seen at galactic distance, they must appear to us with a shifted spectrum. There is no need to assume that galaxies are receding from us to explain the Hubble effect. There is no need of the Big Bang. The planets a higher density at the center than at the surface. The central part has to grow faster and the surface distend. There is no need to plate tectonics. The speed of condensation of the middle of the space is always much lower than the speed of light. There are no black holes. Contrary to corpuscles, waves in media may be divided into two wave trains and interfere. There is no need of the presence probability. The Orsay experiment, also known as Aspects experiment, poses no problem. The state of polarization is of course the same for the two symmetrical wave trains emitted by electrons. There is no need of quantum entanglement. Some phenomena related to light and gravity are explained in a quite elementary way, by the medium of space and the particles of space that compose it. But the mystery remains for the electric and magnetic fields. In the same way, all the problems related to particles remain unresolved.